Good evening, everybody. In our last class, we were able to explain and we define the fact that and it is easy to actually import um, files into your SPSS database so that you can be able to process it for easy access analysis. And today, we'll be taking the class further. Um, we'll try to see how that if we have an already existing database, how can we, how can we be able to utilize what we already have in an existing database? How can we utilize it to get what we want? That's what is going to form the subject of our discussion today. That is what is going to form the subject of our discussion today. So now let's go on to my screen, screen that you already know. Um, I, I believe you have seen it before. So let me just be let me just be sure that you can see my screen. Okay, fine. So this is an empty screen that you can see here. This is an empty screen. And we have our database here on our desktop. We have a database called um bio two eight bio two eight right here that's something like this let me make it visible for you um, let me make it visible okay fine this is actually our document the one we want to work on it's right here on desktop that's like the last thing on desktop there this one here so basically, but, um, it's a database that I've sent to your class already, so you, you, you should, you should um, have access to it already. Something you already have. My document is towards the lower end of my screen. That was the, the left region of my screen there. So it's something you can easily find too. If you have the document, all you need to do is to load into Excel, into SPSS. It's an Excel document. I was saying one time that it's possible for you to be able to to actually um, process different formats of a particular document depending on what you want to achieve per time. You can process different formats of of a document of a document depending on what you want to to do per time. So let's see how far we can go from there. Now um, I'm trying to verify if my screen is active. So you can read from me but let me see if i can show you what the excel screen looks like when you open it sorry i really cannot shout today so you might just do well to increase your volume so let me see if i can show that screen to you so let me call this excel screen excel screen so i think my excel is normally open now one of the issues is actually trying to see how I can, I don't want to give you screenshots, I want to, to be sure that you can see exactly what I am doing, exactly what I am doing. So let me see if I can find this control center doc, uh, maximum excel by two eight assignment, okay fine. So now this is what it actually looks like, this is what the excel sheet looks like. So if you have it already, this is what it looks like. It's, it's what I've sent to your class already. So here we have, let me zoom it out a little bit so you can have a better view. So you wouldn't say, I can't see, I can't see. So here you have gender, you have age, you have education, you have vacation, you have smoking, you have employment, you have feeding per day. That's what you have. Now, someone else has collected this data in Excel, which is what most people are common, uh, uh, are, are commonly I used to let me put it that way. So now it's left for you to actually see how you can convert this into a format that you can process easily, and that format entails that you, you import this data into SPSS. Now there are two ways you can do it. One is that you come to back to your SPSS window, to your SPSS window, you go to File. Um, I think my, my doc might not be able to show that. Doc is just um, the panel on, on the MacBook. That's what it is. So, um, but if you have your computer, go to the upper, uh, um, go to the, the to the upper region of your screen, on your SPSS screen, you see file. I showed you a file is located in our last class. You see file. Then from there you click on, 
open or you see import data if you see import data you see database excel csv text data sas data dbase lotus and the rest of them now what you are doing is actually that the, the computer is showing that there are different files format that you can import per time so your own is to choose the one that you want like this one that is excel so all you need to do is to choose excel and then the computer would open up for you the computer will open up for you something like this in box. Okay, let me be sure I can show you that. Okay, fine. The computer will open up something like this for you. Now, remember I told you that you can actually choose the directories that you want to choose your documents from. Now, for mine, you can see Mac. This is users. So, you select where your document is saved and then you select it. But my MacBook is actually not acting straight and I'm just trying to direct you. Most of you don't know, don't really don't want to learn again, so I am trying to be very careful. So basically, if you see your document listed, depending on where you saved it, if it's on desktop, go to your desktop and then click desktop. You will see by two assignment if you have saved it on desktop. Your desktop is that television screen where you have your stuff. All you need to do is click on it or you don't click on it and, and click open, and then we are good. Click on open, and then we are good. Now another way is that you go to your now we can do that is that you go to your um you go to your desktop um your desktop yeah and just drag the file into spss i mean when your normal window is open like this on the spss spss your normal window is open this way on spss all you need to do is to drag the file from your desktop into your spss so you drag and drop it and when you drag and drop it, you allow it to process for a while. When that happens, you would have something like this. You have something like this. Let me see if I can have that in the screen. You have something like this. Now, all you need to do is to click on OK. Then you are good to go. Click on OK. Now, what the computer is telling is that the computer is saying, I'm picking files from sheets. A1, G51, that's if you are familiar with Excel. But basically, if you are using the exact file, the exact file with all your headings on one one row, then it should be able to decode that. That's what you are trying to do. So it's saying this is how it will look like. It's showing you a preview here. It's showing you a preview here to see how it will look like. Preview here. So if you feel that that's what it is, then you click on OK, and then you are good to go. Once you click on OK, you are allowed to load for a while. You are allowed to load for a while. And remember that while you are doing that, your output would show up. Remember your output. I say whatever you are doing, the computer will try to show you that there's an output. Um, you have your input and your output. So your computer will show, it will show you that you have an input and an output. So basically, this is what your output is. You minimize your output and then you focus on your SPSS main file. You focus on your SPSS main file. Focus on your SPSS main file, and then you fade into. Okay, now basically this is what you have. So let me see if I make that visible for you. Um, fine. No, 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 no. This is good. So this is when you import. This is what you have, which is good for your personal viewing. So now when you notice what you have here is actually gender, age, and when you go to your variable view, you see that the computer has tried tried to actually show you what is coded but now you can now go ahead and define your labels education if, if education excuse me, education for this database you don't know what education of these people of course it talks about smoking so it's education of smokers so you write smoking educational profile of smokers so that will be educational profile smokers and here it will be location of smokers today i have my pc on so i'm a bit faster so this will be education of educational level of smokers. then you have a um, page of smokers then you have employment status of smokers then feeding pattern of smokers that is what you have here now fine so you come back to your data view obviously the data here has been entered for you so all into this start processing stops so remember 
remember that um, if you are to if you are to actually um, process your if you are to process your um, to run your descriptives, descriptives are basically frequencies, mean, median, mode, and the rest of them. It's very simple. All you need to do is come to under your file manager. You come to analyze. Then you come to descriptive statistics. Then frequency or just descriptives. You see descriptives there. Then you select what you want. Now we click on descriptive. Let me see if I can make that visible for you. Visible for you. When you click on descriptives, we have something like this. Okay. Sorry, just give me a minute. Let me make it available for you to see. So you have um, descriptives. So this is what you have in the editing age of smokers so obviously saying you can only run descriptives for age of smokers then you select options when you come to options you see different different options available for you let me see if i can make that this is new new input, new input. New input. so options okay no, no. okay so this is what you have you have mean some median standard division variance range standard error mean you know and they're saying the order should be is used should be variable is alphabetic ascending how do you want it to be just click on okay and then you click on okay so basically now you have your descriptives for age of smokers now that is one way now when you do that remember that you will have your output out again then always for again for every time you do that your output will come out and your output is what you are going to save for anybody that wants to see. So basically, I am going to minimize my output still because I'm not done yet. So I will go back to that same um, uh, um, data set and okay, I'll minimize my output. Minimize my output. I've done that already. So if I maximize my output to come back, you can see from your screen. I'll minimize my output and then I have something like this. So all I need to do is also come to, um, to my input um let me show that it is so fine now so um over the next step no input okay descriptives okay let me just you can still go back to your SPSS window go to analyze you can come to descriptions and just go to frequency on that frequency you can push everything that you that you know that is there let me make it visible for you. Frequencies, let me make it visible. Something like this. Once you click on that, I've, I've done all these all these stops before in your previous class, so that's why I'm not wasting much time on this. So you pick them up. Pick, pick, pick. Sorry. You pick, you click this, go in, click the rest. You can just select all of them and send it in. When you send it in, you click on okay okay now you can go to statistics and then select the ones you want if it's quartiles mean you see the option they want to click on statistics standard deviation variance range standard error mean minimum maximum then you click on continue then you click on okay then your output will come out the output will show you the gender the age of smokers education qualification and everything that you have you can see this gender age of smokers you can see additional level with their percentages you can see it but the first option was only able to calculate descriptives for only age. And that's why when you calculate descriptives, all you had was just the age of smokers. Now, when you're done with this, you're supposed to check the correlation between all the association between, um, you're told to check the association between, let me see what you have to check again, between age and smoking, gender and smoking, education and smoking. So to do that, you go to your analyze again, analyze, you come to, descriptives then after when you, once you you hover around descriptives you see cross tabs down that's number four or three depending on what you're using once you do that once you do that you would have something like this let me make it visible for you you have something like this okay you have something like this you have something like this so now if you want to check gender and smoker, you turn rows gender and then smoker and maybe age of smokers. You, sorry, 
and smoking. I think smoking is um, the prisoner started the prison of smokers, smoking. Um, so this should be age of smokers. I think that should be an error. So it should be age of smokers. You send it in. So you are checking the relation between gender and age of smokers. It's not prefer be smoke then be sure of this. So remember um this can easily implement studies display variable names okay education location smoking good so i'll take smoking in here i'll take gender out so the rest of them you can pick one by one and since this is there isn't smoking to you are taking age effect of gender age on smoking you're also checking education on smoking you move down the location you move it in employment you move it in feeding per day you move it in then when you are done you click on okay now so you have this output now what is what this kind of assertion is telling you that it's actually a cross tabulation saying it's trying to show you a two by two how many females sm smoke how many females don't smoke that's what it's saying so if you notice you have female no 23 female yes four and that's basically what you are having so if you sc scroll down to you see age of smokers how many 18 years smoke how many 19 years smoke and all what have you so that's basically what you do for the educational level of smokers, you have that same thing to level education of smokers, you have everything there. So now, and that's thing you can do is that you can actually take it one step further to see if you can add percentages. So that will be file, you come to um, analyze, descriptives, cross tabs, same thing you have done. Then when you get to this place where you have your inputs, where you have your input, your inputs, let me see if I have that. Okay. Okay. Fine. Let me make this. So we have the input here. You just need to click on statistics and click. Um, I think. Let me see. Sorry, cells. Click on cells. Then when you click on cells, you will see percentages. Click on row. I can make it visible right now. And then you click on columns to show you percentages. Then click OK. Then OK. And then the computer is going to process everything for you again. So you have your input, your output here, back. So here you see the total processing number valid. Okay, let me make the output visible again. You can see. So now you see those numbers are valid 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. And here you have how many males as those smoke. That's female, no. At 23, what you can see, males are how many? How many males don't smoke? Here you see, so it's very difficult for, for you to be able to actually be able to do this thing manually. So that's what the computer actually avails you, and all the percentages are actually listed here. Once you can do this, you can tell in a population of 10,000 people how many people eat two times a day, and how, how and how is it related with their smoking profile. So here we are seeing that those that um, eat one time a day, uh, um, two out of the entire population smoke. Those that eat three times a day, um, about eight of them smoke. So that way you can actually make conclusions that can be of public health relevance. And that's actually what we are considering today. So basically, I, I believe you can find a way around based on our former class and what we have today. So if you have any questions, you, can know, you just know how to channel it towards the appropriate channel. Thank you very much and do have a wonderful time. It's nice to have you here again. Thank you. God bless you.